I like to try to get under the eye and across the anterior malar area with one puncture if it's possible, and I just advance my needles and use larger needles. But you feel a little pinch. And right now I'm using a 28 gauge, three quarter inch needle, which is a great workhorse for a lot of areas. And she has the little malar separation here that we're going to start filling. And I'm subdermal, there's no resistance as I advance. And I inject as I go. You can kind of see it fill as I'm going in. And the nice thing about it is with the lidocaine in it, I'm leaving a little tunnel here where it's going to be numb. And I can go back through that little area to get up around the suborbital areas. And I'm just going to fan it a little bit to lift up that little malar separation. And I'm using a 27 gauge hyaluronic acid here because I want a lot of volume. But staying subdermal makes it look smoother on the surface in these areas where you're lifting up a depression. Sometimes if you're too close in the dermis, too close to the surface, it almost makes the area you just injected look flat. I'm going to just mold it a little bit. And I'm going to go over marking. So what I'm going to do is mark Linda. Um, and these are markings that are generally based on the golden rule or phi principle. But what it does is help you decide if someone has asymmetric cheeks or a round face, or just a face that's a little bit hard to tell where should be the maximum apex of the curve of their cheek, the markings kind of help you know and keep that curve where it's going to be the most flattering. So usually what we'll do is I'll use, just use a white eyeliner so that it don't tattoo the patient. And we'll go from the lateral canthus to the top of the tragus. and then perpendicular line down from that. You go from the middle of the tragus to the top of the alar crease, then from the middle of the tragus down to the commissure, And I usually add a little line, too, from the lateral canthus down to the commissure. Where this line intersects this line tends to be the most flattering place for the, for the maximum curve of the cheek. And most people, especially if they don't have very nice cheeks, it helps to give them an, almost an egg-shaped or ovoid curve. And so I kind of connect the lines. I make an ovoid shape between these lines. So I don't want my maximum cheek curve to be any farther forward than this part. I don't want it to be any lower than the line between the tragus and the oral commissure. And I, but I want it to extend up over the outer zygoma. What I want to do here is I want to try to just bring this out a little bit because she really doesn't have much volume loss. But really what I want to do is I want to lift this lower face. And you know that's a tough area. It drives people crazy. And it's kind of a hard area to correct without surgery. But if someone could use a little bit of volume in their cheeks, and even in the preauricular area in the back of their jawline, it's going to help pull all that skin up a little bit and suspend it so it doesn't look like they have extra skin. And here I'm going to use a 27 gauge, one and a half inch needle. It's going at the edge of my oval, make a little pinch of subdermal, and I'm going to inject as I advance. Now out here can be a little bit fibrous, especially as we get closer to the ear. So I'm going to be subdermal, but not much deeper than that. I don't want to get into the masseter muscle. I don't want to get into the parotid gland, obviously. But I'm using a 27 gauge hyaluronic acid, which is very easy to mold, and it's very soft. 
I think it looks smoother when I first put that in this area than some of the other fillers. And especially the lateral cheek, it's not as forgiving because of the fibrous tissue. And sometimes with the one and a half inch needle, it is a little bit harder to know what depth you're at. So it's more of a advance withdraw and then redirect. And as long as you're subdermal, it's very easy to mold. It can look a little bumpy if you're not subdermal. But most of the time, you can even press those little bumps back down into the lower level, where it'll look smooth. Oh, is that a very sensitive spot for you? Uh, a little bit. OK. Not too bad. Here, you're usually injecting a larger amount, a larger volume at a time. So you can easily put a syringe in with just the one puncture and fanning it. So I have to be careful not to inject too fast because it does hurt if it's fast. Get rid of this. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put some in along in this area here too to kind of just help pull back on the jawline.